Hey everyone, welcome in, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking in painting videos again. So last time I did a video about how to use flow edit to do in painting. This one's a little bit more simple, a little bit more classic, you know, just creating a mask and then using that mask on the original video to change the video or in paint the video. Uh, the one, the biggest difference here is that we're going to use an image to video first frame and then allow the model to kind of inference on the mask using that first frame image to video. Um, so it, it provides pretty cool results, uh, as you can see from the videos that played at the beginning. So let's jump right into it. Okay. So if you head over to my Patreon, the links in the description, my Patreon is completely free. It'll always be free. There's a couple tiers in there if you want to donate uh, to just help me out to create more content, but the content will always be free. So head over to this post, Impending Videos Simplified, and just grab the workflow to get started. And so if you can run one, you should be able to have enough VRAM to run this workflow. Okay, so first thing you need to do is go to the model loaders. So that's all the way on the top left here and make sure that you select the correct models. So the top three here are all Flux, are all the models for Flux. So I, I'm using Flux One Dev, the two clips from Flux, and the Flux VAE. There's a ton of tutorials out there about Flux. If you haven't used Flux before, you can head over to watch one of those. And then for the WAN models, if you don't know how to, if you don't know how to use WAN image to video, I have a video about it already. I linked it in the description. You can head over and watch that video to familiarize yourself. That shows you where to get all the models and how to download them, where to put them in the ComfyUI structure, all of that. So here we're just gonna load all the correct models. So we have our, our WAN image to video model here. I'm gonna use the 480p model. You can also do it with the 720 model, but it just takes longer. So that's why I'm gonna go with this one. And then we have our load clip. So make sure you're using the native one. If you have both the wrapper and the native installed, both clips don't work for both of the workflows. So make sure you're using the native clip for this one. Clip vision, the clip, native clip vision H is what I'm using. And then lastly, the native VAE. If you're having any trouble with any of these models, you know, with it throwing errors related to these models, just make sure you're using the native versions and not the wrapper versions if you do use both. Okay, so I gave you this one place to just change all the models and then that should flow through the rest of the workflow. You shouldn't have to change the models anywhere else in the workflow. Okay, so next thing you want to do is upload your video. So I'm gonna use this video of this woman talking. Make sure whatever you do decide to use that whatever you're gonna in-paint is kind of clear. If it's like, it, it, you may have issues if the in-painted object comes in later on in the video because we're gonna in-paint the first frame. So if the object you're going to in-paint isn't in the first frame, then the model's not gonna know to change it or get rid of it. The only other thing is for the 480p model, you should use these resolutions. Um, the only thing is if you have a horizontal video instead of a vertical video, you can change these, you can swap the width and height. Um, you can try other resolutions, but it's really recommended to, to use this resolution for 480p. Okay, so now, so now we're gonna do the in-painting steps. So we loaded our video, I put, I put some notes here. So always keep both the enable load video and enable model loaders set to yes. For the first run, we need to get the first frame so that we can in-paint it. The first step is to get the first frame run and run the workflow and save the image. So let's do that. All right, so just run the workflow. So this will either save in whatever repo you set the file opening and prefix for, or you can just right click and save the image. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so that's step one. Now turn that step off and go to step two. 
Okay, so I am using some of these speed ups. If any of these speed ups throw errors for you, you can just bypass them. I've gotten a lot of questions, especially around Tcash in my other videos, uh, because I use the Tcash node from the original Tcash creators, but um, use whichever one works for you. This is Tcash for Flux. So make the Tcash for Wand doesn't work for Flux. So make sure if you're gonna use it in the Flux workflow that you have the right one. All right, so drag your image in that we just saved, the image from here. And then, so I'm gonna auto mask the hair. You can always also manually mask the hair. Um, I'm gonna give her some red hair here, but you can always just mask the hair manually and then just drag the mask over to the grow mask with blur. But I'm gonna use Florence too to just auto mask it for me. Okay, so I want it to mask the hair. So that's why I typed hair here. And then when you when you inpaint, you wanna describe the whole image, not just like, you know, if you mask the hair, you don't wanna just say blonde hair. I would, I always describe the whole image because it helps the model understand the whole thing and helps blend it better than just, you know, if you just said blue hair, it's not gonna know where the hair is supposed to be or anything like that. All right, so let's go, let's say a woman with, let's try neon red hair. Okay, so now we have our correct mask and we have our correct prompt, so we should be able to run it. Okay, so you can see it masks the hair very well. And if you wanna change how much, the, how much blur there is or how much the mask grew, you can always change the expand and the blur radius. So we gave her some pretty bright red hair. It got a little bit shorter. So if you want to, if you want to try to get longer hair, um, you could just run it again. If you run it maybe two or three times, we'll probably get longer hair. I'm actually going to do that because I think we may run into an issue if the hair is not the same length because um, when we mask the the video to do the video in painting, I think it's gonna expect that longer hair and then it's gonna be, the hair's gonna be brown where we're missing hair. So let's run it again. All right, there we go. So now we got long red hair. So let's save that off. Okay, now let's go back up to our bypasser and we're gonna go to step three. So for step three, you wanna turn on the inpaint video and then all both of the auto masking nodes. Okay, so first thing you wanna do is drag your video in and then you can change your prompt. It should help the adherence a little bit. So I'm gonna say a woman with neon red hair talking. Okay, and then you have an option of two different auto maskers. So one, and remember we're masking the original video. So my woman has, here, let me drag the original over here. So my woman had long brown hair. So that's why I, I captioned brown hair here. And then, your other option is to use the segment anything points editor, which I'm gonna show you real quick because I think that this is the best option. So I'm gonna show you how to use this real quick. There is a, a note here. If you're struggling, there's a tool tip. It'll show you how to, how to use it. Okay, so I'm gonna drag in my original Image, make sure you drag it over this top part. If you try to drag it in here, it's not gonna work. So drag the image over this top part. Okay, and then all we need to do is put a green dot on her hair and then a red dot on her face. And we should be able to get a pretty good mask of, of the hair and the face. So um, if you need more dots, so if you're trying to mask like two people or you know maybe you have like, three cardboard boxes and an image you want to get rid of. The way that you would do that is uh, shift left click creates a green circle. So that's, that's your, what you want to, what you want to segment or mask shift, right click creates a, 
a negative coordinate, which is what you don't want to mask. Okay, so, but if, you, if it's one thing, you generally, so like if it's hair, generally you're best off just using one positive coordinate and one negative coordinate. Okay, so I just did what I told you guys not to do. I dragged the image over the, the box instead of over the top part. Like I said, let's put the green coordinate on the hair, the red coordinate on the face. And then um, one more thing, I did have a couple instances where I ran out of RAM while going through uh, the WAN portion. I have 90 gigabytes, or 96 gigabytes of RAM. So if you are, if you do run into that issue, just restart ComfyUI from the manager before you run this last part of the workflow. Up here, we should be able to see whether it reduces the amount of RAM that's being held in memory. Yeah, see, it went down from 36% to 12%, which should give us plenty of room to run this. All right, so we are expecting to get a, we're expecting to get a video out of a woman with neon red hair instead of this brown hair. So let's run it and we'll give it a shot. Oh, and one more thing when you run this, um, I also have a speed up box here. Again, these are not required. If you can't get them working, just bypass them. If you really need help, you really wanna get them working, head over to the Discord. It's not easy to troubleshoot in the YouTube comments or in the Patreon comments. It's way easier to do it in Discord. So if you have issues, please head over there and I'm more than happy to help you with anything you run into. Okay, so you can see our mask came out pretty well. If we look at our original versus our, our mask, it's pretty much perfect over the hair. Maybe if I moved that green circle down a little bit in my points editor, you know, down to that part where it's flickering, down into around this part, maybe I'd get a little bit better uh, generation of the mask. Okay, so this sort of worked. For some reason, it, it wanted to go to this green color. Um, I'm not sure if that's because of the original brown color and the the model not liking the red too much, but um that you're gonna run into this where you know it the model just didn't really understand what you were asking from it very well so i have another one here of the woman with blue hair instead let's try to run this one through and see if we get a better result and i'm gonna move the mask a little bit because that flickering of the of the mask down here may have also caused a little bit of the the blue to come in all right, so it liked the blue hair much better, but you can see I kind of lost the mask uh, right there. See how that mask flickers? And that caused the brown hair to come in uh, right around there. That's the reason for the brown hair coming in. So you ha you have to play with the masking and the and the the source image a little bit to get it to work out for you, but. Let's, I'll, I'll, try, I'll just run it until we get a perfect one and then we'll be, we'll be done here. All right, so there we go. Much better generation. We still get, you know, when the, the hand comes into play, you get a little bit of morphing. It's going to struggle a little bit. When the article of clothing or what, whatever it might be gets covered up, throughout the generation. So you're best off using flow edit if, if that happens because flow edit uses a little bit more of the like model intelligence inferencing. So go check out that video if that's a problem you're trying to solve. But if it's something that's clearly in the video the whole time, this is a much simpler workflow to use. Okay, and then just to show you real quick, if you don't wanna use the points editor and you just wanna use Florence 2 with a prompt, this is how you do it. I'm not gonna do the whole video generation again, but all you need to do is connect up this SAM2 segmentation node to the grow mask with blur node, and then just run it and we'll get our mask. All right, so you can see why I prefer the points editor, right? This is just, I mean, it's a borderline un, unusable mask. That's why I'd recommend using the points editor instead. All right, so that is it for this video. Thank you all for checking it out. I hope you have fun with the workflow. Um, if you have not already, follow me on Patreon. Really appreciate seeing all, all of you follow me over there as well. 
The workflows come out a few days earlier there. So if you want to get the workflows before they come out on YouTube, follow me over there. Follow my other socials in the description below. And I will talk to you in the next video. Thanks for watching.